cue, folks. That's our cue, recording in progress. So, is David Smith. I am at present the um, president of the Residence Council. And according to our bylaws, it is my duty and privilege to preside over this, our annual meeting of the Residence Association. So, that's who I am. That's why we're here. And I believe I'm a, um, obligated to read the PAC evaluation policy. PAC evacuation policy. When the alarm is activated, the event facilitator will call the concierge desk at 5600 or zero to find out whether or not to evacuate. If evacuation is determined, the event facilitator will initiate the evacuation as follows. Please exit the room immediately using either of the two sets of double doors and immediately clear the hallway between pool and PAC. First to evacuate should be any residents walking unassisted or with a cane. All residents who have a walker, wheelchair, or electric cart should evacuate last with assistance. Once the room is cleared, the facilitator of the meeting will shut both sets of double doors and report cleared status to concierge. So that's that. Here's our order of business today. I'll do th these are my welcome remarks. We'll have um, a presentation on the financial report by Christy Battistoni, the director of finance here. We will then introduce the new and returning members of the uh, 2022 Residence Council. We will then do some selected highlights of the Woodland Pond committees that will be each of us who is a liaison to the committee will talk for 30 or 45 seconds about the business of that committee accomplishments for the year. Then we have two committees we're going to highlight the sustainability committee uh, with Don Sangre and the uh, employee appreciation fund committee with Ray Smith. Then we'll review quickly again the highlights of the Residence Council for 2021 and then we'll do some Q&A. I have one announcement to make. Those of you who signed up to your meal at the, uh, in the pub between three and four, if the meeting runs over, they're gonna hold the meals and not charge us for delivery, not charge you for delivery. So Al Chasen brought that up and we solved that. So that's not an issue. If the meeting runs till five, six o'clock, the meal will still be there for you. Um, Christy, I, I think we're ready for you now. Oh, if you could, please hold your questions till the end, and then we'll circulate a couple of microphones around for, for Christy, okay? There we go. Is that me, the reason that that's doing that so loudly? Or yours is on? Does it sound so echoey? Does it sound echoey to people or? Okay, that's better. Cool. Can you hear that? Like, oh, okay. Maybe, is there a volume here maybe? Oh, that one. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's, I, I can already, it seems better for me. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right, so hold on. Can I just get rid of this, got it, leave meeting thing, or does that affect something? Just say got it? Okay. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Christy Battistoni, Director of Finance, and I'm here to talk about uh, the upcoming 2022 budget. Um, the reason that we're, um, we're required uh, by the state to um, submit it to them by November 1st each year. So um, we just had a meeting with the Audit and Finance Committee of the Board of Directors. Uh, yesterday or the day before and then tomorrow it will go to the full board of directors for approval so what i'm going to do is i'm going to review basically uh what we call our budget assumptions on which we base our budget on for 2022. so at the end of um 2020 we ended uh the, yeah, at the end of 2020, we ended very strong with an occupancy level of uh, 195 independent living units, which was 97% cent per, per cent, um, occ occupied. 
unfortunately, at the beginning of 2021, things haven't been um, as good. We hovered around 190, 191 um, throughout the year, but we do expect to end this year um, very strong and we hope to be up to 195 and again at that 97% occupancy. We've had 16 settlements um, through September and we actually have three this week in October and we have uh, many more in the, uh, in the loop for the rest of the year. So we're really hoping to continue that. Marketing's been doing a great job with uh, um, getting people in the pipeline. Um, so again, so the occupancy 195 at the end of 2020, we're expecting to end 2021 um, at the same. So I know this is everything that you've all been waiting to hear what the rate, monthly uh, service fee rates are gonna be in 2022. We are doing a 4% increase across the board. Um, as we speak, um, the letters with the rates, just in case I'm not sure that you can see it that well, but if you can't, um, the letters are all gonna be in your cubbies for you to take after the meeting. And the reason that we went to a 4% increase is that costs for things have just been skyrocketing. Um, with the supply chain, it's just been really difficult. Food costs, everything has just gone way up. That and uh, labor shortages. So we, we need to, again, increase um, the minimum wage rate, our lowest wage rate and, and the wages to become an employer of choice. So um, again, it's going to be 4% across the pool, across the board, including the second person fee. And uh, over here is, is the dollar amount per month, per unit. We did uh, last year was a 2.8% and then it was uh, 3.5 for the three years before that. I think the last time we did 4% was back in 2015. Actually, Dave, I don't mind taking questions as we go along instead of going back, um, if people prefer that. Go ahead. Hold on. Oh. Oh, that's right. He said you were going to be the since launcher. I can't read any of those okay. things on the screen. Are you going to be handing out paper copies of your? Um, yeah, I just mentioned that they're all going to be in your cubby when you leave this me meeting. Um, the rate letters with the, with the rates are going to be in your cubby for you to pick up. Right. I understand that. But is that sheet? budget numbers on it going to be available to us. So yes, what I'll do tomorrow is the board meeting where the board will essentially approve the budget based on the um, what the audit and finance um, committee says. So once the board approves the budget, I can certainly make this assumption page available to anybody that wants it. So anytime from Friday on. Thank you. Does anybody have any other questions regarding the rates or the increase or anything? So for, she asked about the second person fee and the increase. So for every unit, there's a first person fee. If there's a second person fee, if there's a second person in the unit, they pay this additional amount. Oh, so that's, that's increasing the 4% as well, the second person fee. Right, so then uh, whatever the change is, you have to add the new Correct. Like, fee to that. Correct. Okay, that's what I want yep. to know. Yep, yep. So like for a Willow, it would be the 177 plus the 54. Okay. Yep. Okay. Any other questions on the rates? What about the, what is it, the, the white birch is the cottage. Okay. Okay, um, just to talk a little bit too, I just wanted to mention that um, the number of refunds, we've had a lot of people in 2021 pass away directly out of the health center, which causes us to give a refund within 30 days. And the amount of refunds that we've given out um, over the past few years has pretty much averaged around $4.5 million dollars over the last three years, we've refunded 5.4 million and it's only September. So it's just been a really big year for uh, refunds. So I expect it to be 
probably probably seven ish by the end of the year because every time we reoccupy a unit there a refund is due so i just wanted you to kind of know the amount of money that is uh that we're uh, paying out okay so um i talked about the il occupancy number being 195 um for the health center we are put that up a little bit The health center, we are budgeting 38, um, an occupancy of 38 a month uh, out of our 40 units. Um, we're actually pretty full in our assisted living and our memory care right now. Um, so we're budgeting that we will have 38 out of 40 units filled in assisted, 18 out of the 20 in memory care and 33 out of 40 and skilled. We are increasing um, our assisted living rates this year, 4%. We feel that the market can bear it. So the assisted living rates um, will be, and again, this is for private pay residents, not if you have a life care contract. So private pay residents. So the rates will be anywhere between 6,300 and $11,000 in assisted living. Um, there's a base rate uh, for a studio, and then there's a base rate for a one bedroom, and then there's different tier levels if you need more services. So that's why that amount seems, you know, from $6,300 to $11,000, that's where that comes from. So 4% increase in the assisted living. Memory care, we're just increasing it 1%. It was $9,800 a month. It's going to go up to $9,900 a month. Um, and then if you have the tier, it would be $12,000 a month in memory care. Um, and our skilled nursing rates, we're gonna keep at the $503 a day. Um, it's been that for the past uh, few years, but it's very in line with um, other nursing homes in our area. Anybody have any questions on, on those rates? Can I raise a question? Sure. Can you just describe how the 4% uh, overall rate was calculated. What, what's it based on? Uh, four percent for the assisted, or four percent for? Okay. Well, um, Michelle gets on a lot of leading age calls and and talks to the other CCRC um, presidents. And basically, we've never. I don't think we've ever gone before four percent. But everybody, all the other CCRCs, were increasing to four and over this year and it's basically just because of our costs and needing to um, increase our wages for our we're really we have a lot of staff shortages and people are going to work at mcdonald's or not working at all so we need to really become an employer of choice so we need to increase our rates and then to cover the um exceeding costs as the costs go up yeah my colleague says it's called, called inflation, inflation. Uh, I, I know all the things you described. I just wonder if there's a specific. It's, there's not like a calculation now. It's a, basically a discussion. And um, we did the 2.8% last year, but we really feel like we don't have much of a choice this year. Yes. Christy, I don't think, I don't remember ever having received an explanation of the tiers, what they include, what they entail. And on, so I, I wonder if we can get that. Absolutely. So marketing has a packet and I have a packet sitting in my office and I can give you copies and it basically shows our rate sheets that we hand out to anybody that is interested in coming into Woodland Pond. And it talks, it has our different contracts for independent living and the prices. And then it does break down in assisted living, the rates and that what is included in each tier and what makes you be a tier one, a tier two or a tier three. So in assisted living, we have three tiers and garden view, we have one tier. But yeah, Barbara, you can stop in and I can give you a copy Any, if anybody ever wants that. Anyone else? Okay, so regarding our entrance fee contracts for this year, Many of you probably have the 90% refundable plan. Well, that plan is going away January 1st. We will not be offering that plan to 
anyone else anymore. Um, most of the industry does not have that plan anymore. Um, that plan is going to drop to a 75% refundable plan. So right now we have 90%, 50%, and traditional, which is a 0%. Um, starting in January, it'll be a 75%, 50%, and 0%. No, as of January 1st. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. The traditional, yeah, the 0%. Uh, the After. traditional plan actually amortizes over four years and then has a, has no value. But I, I guess I talk about it in the long term where it's there's no refund because people are normally here more than the four years. But so anyway, 90% um, plan is going away. So anybody that and we're actually using this as a marketing uh, point for anybody that wants that 90% plan needs to settle before December 31st. So uh, if you have Chris, friends you out there that want that plan. On the refundable plan, when you make a refund, do you deduct anything for changes to the apartment, repairs, or anything like that before a refund is made? So um, if you're going to make any changes to the apartment, then that's always discussed with Tom early on. And yes, there's been times where there's been a hold back. Some people have put in bathtubs, and um, so then they need the for us to take that bathtub out and put back the shower that should be is withheld from the refund and and a resident is told that ahead of time otherwise normal wear and tear carpet you know stuff like that that's not withheld it's going to be okay. st structural changes um, we've tried to sell units as they are and if a new resident is interested in it then we wouldn't hold it back but for the most part something like a bathtub or that type of situation we would Did, do you have a question, Jenny? I thought you had your hand up. I would just like to know what is considered not, I'm pretty loud. <laughs> um, I would like to know uh, what upgrades are non refundable. If I make an up, for example, I glassed in my porch. Um, and it was very expensive, right? As you might know. So, uh, I mean, that's not going to be a holdback because that's basically something you're not going to get anything additional back with your refund. But that that's that's like an upgrade. So, yeah. so I'm what I'm hearing you say: upgrades are are good, and I'm not going to be right back or charged. In my case, right. and when charged. I say an upgrade, a bathtub, it might be an upgrade to you, but it wouldn't necessarily be something that the next resident would want. And um, so that's why that would be a hold back. Well, I'm guessing the next resident will really like my high I'm, toilet. I'm sure they would. I mean, a lot of the cottage residents have um, enclosed their porches, I believe, and things like that. So, I mean, those wouldn't be holdbacks. Um, so, again, it's, it's not that common. Paul, that that happens just in situations like that. Um, okay, so anyway, about the 90% contract. So um, so yes, the new contract will be um, a 75% refundable contract. We are not changing the entrance fees on that contract. It's going to become a 75% refundable contract, not 90%, but those fees that those entrance fees that we charge this year will stay the same. So there's no change in those um, entrance fees. The traditional plan, we are increasing um, the small, the three smallest units up 10%, and then the three largest units up 15% for the traditional plan. There's going to be no um, increase in our life care, single or double this year. We feel that that's still um, sometimes if it hits over 200,000 mentally, it seems like it's just a whole nother number. So those um, those rates are going to stay the same. And then our 50% refundable plan, our entrance fees, we're going to increase those 5% for the three smallest units and 10% for the three largest units. 
Anybody have any questions on uh, the entrance fees? Okay. Oh. Right there. Yeah, when you say it's 90% down 5%, is that, is that being changed? Um, with a 90% refundable plan, it's a, it's a large liability for us that we have to pay out um, when the time comes. So with a 75% refundable plan, it's less of a liability if you're following what I'm saying. So that's why most of the CCRCs are doing away with the 90% because it's, it's less of a liability, less debt that we would have to pay out. Does well, the sense? reason why I'm asking is because that was the big thing for me when I heard 90% of, if say I left or, uh, that was a big thing when you buy the place. No, I understand. And I, I, yeah. I hear you with that. Um, I think we won't have an issue if other CCRCs are in the same boat and not offering a 90%. It's not like somebody's going to go somewhere else over coming here because they can get a 90% plan. Many don't have them anymore. So, um, well, I'm not pleased. I mean, it, it doesn't affect your contract, Vivian. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. If anybody thought otherwise, everybody that has a contract with 90% now, that's ex what you signed up for is what you have. Oh, I feel yeah. better. This is only <laughs> this is only for new new people coming in oh. uh, to Woodland Pond. They will not have the option for ninety percent. Oh, I'm good. sorry. Thank if anybody you. thought that that is not the case, we just you. take your money away when you're right right thank, under your thank nose. Thank you, huh? Doctor Battistoni. She feels yeah. better. Okay, you feel better, Viv. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just it's, we're only going to offer the seventy five percent to new people coming in. Anybody that has the ninety is grandfathered. I guess that's the best way to use it, right? Grandfathers? <laughs> Great grandfather. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see here. Okay. So, so for our cash revenue, we're um, we're expecting we're projected to end um, 2021 with uh, $22 million in cash revenue uh, budget. And we're uh, expecting to have a revenue growth of 6.1% uh, um, based on our 2022 budget. And that's gonna be driven from the increase in uh, the monthly service fees and the increase and in occupancy um, in the health center as well. So we expect, we expect a 6.1% growth in revenue next year. Um, our capital budget for, oh, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm. Hold on, hold on Yako. Casey, I saw most of the numbers were 4% or below on the projected increases. So why do you project 6% okay. growth in revenue? So, um, well, we're increasing 4%. Oh, are you saying, well, we expect to have higher occupancy as in the health center, even though we're getting, we're going to increase our rates, but we're also going to have higher occupancy. So that's going to increase our growth. So that's why we expect to have a 6% growth in revenue in 2022, based on what we ended 2021, what we will end 2021 with. Our capital budget for next year is going to be five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. We expect to um, expend seven hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in capital uh, by the end of twenty-one, based on a couple things. Um, we, um, with a health center lobby renovation that was supposed to be in twenty twenty, kind of got pushed off to twenty twenty-one. But the main reason is what we're doing is we're taking. The only units that we have available are Willows. And many of them um, had been lived in for a very long time and they needed to be completely renovated. So we are getting them all done at pretty much at the same time with um, if they needed new kitchens or new countertops or vanities. 
So we're getting all the willows upgraded now um, so that they're ready, more root, more move in ready condition for anybody that um, wants to settle. The uh, incoming resident would still be able to pick out like their paint colors and whatnot, but, but the bulk things such as the new kitchens, countertops, uh, things like that um, will be done in, in the remaining willows. All right. So moving on to the 2022 um, expenses, um, we ex ended, we expect to, for 2021, have 197 full-time equivalent, equivalent employees, um, which is basically based on our hours worked, 37 and a half hours worked. Um, and then we calculate that into 197 full-time employees. And we're budgeting for 2022 to have, um, 199. So basically just an increase in two. So our biggest expense are salaries and benefits. Um, we expect to end 2021 with salary and benefit costs of $11,500,000 and we're budgeting 2022 uh, to be $12 million. Um, and the increase um, is for a few reasons. Um, our rehab staff was actually not in, uh, they weren't our employees for the first four months of the year. They came onto our payroll in May. So that that's one increase that um, is going to hit salaries. Um, we're expecting our health insurance benefits to go up 5.9%. Uh, that's what they're telling us. Our insurance renews in March of every year. So when we do the budget, we just have to get some estimates from um, the company and to let us know what they think it's going to be. So they're telling us to expect a, uh, basically a 6% increase to employee health benefits. And then we're also going to, we increased our minimum, the minimum wage on campus last year from 1166 to $15, but we're going to try to bring that up to $16 and also um, increase um, wages, again, to become the employer of choice so that we can attract employees to come here. Um, they can go and work in some places and, and, you know, I mean, some of the work here, CNAs, it's difficult work and uh, they can go and work at McDonald's and make close to that. So we need to keep uh, increasing our lower wage earners rates. So between those things, we expect to have a, about a 6% uh, growth in um, salary and benefit costs next year. And then any non-salary expenses, um, we actually expect to see a decrease. Um, so this would be basically all our other expenses um, because uh, the contracted rehab had been in our in that line item and it's not there anymore. And our pilot uh, goes up by fifty thousand dollars. That's we know what that's going to be. Um, we're expecting you know food costs. Etc. to go up, um, our interest expense. Um, and we uh, had a $50,000 advertising website update that we did in 2021. So we won't have, that won't be reflected this year. So we actually expect our uh, budgeted non-salary expenses to be lower than last year. Anybody have any questions on, on these assumptions? I got one over here and then one over here. Uh, Chris, I noticed noticed that there are ads on Facebook uh, offering five thousand dollar signing bonuses and various things. How are those calculated in the hourly rates? Those so signing bonuses. Those are um, they offer those with the employee referral bonuses. Is that what you're talking about? No, these are signing bonuses. An employee. Oh, is I hired. see what you're saying. Um, well, they're not they're paid over time to an employee, right, so. But, but that is more than a $16 an hour rate then. Is that right? Right, they would get, they would, and it, they get it over X amount of months. I'd have to ask Bridget what the details are on. They get X after the, the employee has been here, certain amount of time, and then a certain amount of time. So that's staggered over like say the year. But it is calculated in that. In our wage and salary, yes. Okay, okay. So the other question was, where does the amount paid to Sodexo go? 
from, where is it, where does that show up? So um, Sodexo's employees, um, other than like their top management, Ronnie, the chef, um, all their employees are in our salaries in the salary line because they are our employees. And then um, Ronnie's salary and chef, those are, those are in our non-salaried expenses because that they're, um, it's a contracted company that we. Okay, so the non-salary expenses include outside contractors. Correct. I think you know our landscaper, all that type of thing, are in pretty much everything other than salaries. It's just broken down on this assumption page. Obviously, I have it in greater detail um, in our budget, in our detailed budget. Christy, Christy, I have two questions. One, the uh, food and beverage costs. Are those annual contracts or biannual contracts? Um, because, I mean, I'm assuming Sodexo basically takes care of everything. They do. They do right. all the food ordering and everything. And we're just in, we're expecting food to go up substantially. So um, that's why we're kind of assuming there's going to be a, a lot, a much higher amount spent on food this year. And we don't have any leeway, I gather, certainly because of the circumstances, but how what kind of contracts do we have with them? Are they annual? Are they our contract with Sodexo? Yeah. Um, well, we originally had a five year. I think we've been running it. I, it could be a three year. I'd have to look. I can't remember. But our contract with them as far as managing right. everything. Um, I'm not sure if it's. I don't know if we did a three year. I, I'd actually have to check to see where we are in our contract with them right now. It's locked into whatever time frame that is. Right. Yeah. yeah. My other question is about, and I don't know if you can answer it, the employee assistance fund. So uh, separate from the appreciation fund, because that's the. No, no, the appreciation fund. So the fund Instead that raised. tipping. Yes. That fund. Okay. Um, what guidelines are there for who gets it? How long do you have to work here? What? Um, okay, so Ray's going to make a presentation on that later. Gonna, Ray's actually going to speak about yeah, he's this, right? Speak about that later. Oh, okay. Yeah, because okay. he, he, yeah, okay. he's the man. <laughs> okay, he's been the driving force behind it, and um, yeah. again, it's an employee um, set up fund, so he knows the ins and outs of. Uh, I don't even know to tell you the truth who who gets and how long. Yeah, I think it's based on hours, but no, it has nothing to do. It would not be seen here at all because it's funds totally have nothing to do with Woodland Pond. We have a Woodland Pond Cares Fund that where we separately, yes. Anybody have any other questions? You got one, George. Christy, what's pilot? Um, pilot is payment in lieu of taxes. Um, we had a 20 year pilot that we start that um, was negotiated in 2009. So we have a set amount instead of paying like real estate taxes and school taxes individually, we have a set amount for 20 years. And every year at the beginning of the year, X amount goes to the school district, to the town of New Paltz, to the village, but it was predetermined and it's for 20 years. And then I'm not sure what's going to happen after that. We would either need to attempt to renegotiate it or I'm not sure, but so in 09, so it will go to 2029. So it's basically how we pay our taxes. Yes. Is that the negotiation with the town, the city, the, the village? Yeah, I wasn't what? involved. So it, it, it pays the school, the village of New Paltz, the town of New Paltz, the county of Ulster, the ambulance and the fire. So I think I pay six checks for that. Um, yeah. And it increases every year, <laughs> but for the 20 years. Anybody have anything else? Shalom. 
I'm looking for where you have uh, capital expenses for the building, new elevators, repairs, and so on as we get older. I'm missing that. Um, well, we have our capital budget for 2022 right now is set at five. I say five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for next year, and I know Tom recently five hundred twenty-five for next year. Um, I know Tom recently had someone come in to assess the building and kind of set up a timeline of when things would need to be redone. I mean, I think they look at the roof and they look at all kinds of different things, um, and so we we did that this year and um, invested in that plan to see. What, what lies ahead for us. And that's somewhere in this budget? Well, I mean, our capital budget for next year is 525,000. It actually, I mean, we went over what we expected capital wise this year because we wanted to finish up the apartments. We don't expect to have to spend as much money doing that next year, so. Christine, question. Um, during the discussions with the sustainability committee, there were all kinds of issues proposed, like you know, rever uh, changing the um, energy system to re um, you know, uh, replenishing uh, facilities, having a solar, solar. farm, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those were definitely capital expenses that will be required. Where would that fit in this well, picture? It would, if it would be all? in capital, but I mean, I mean that, that would be a much more than just right. I mean, that would have to roof. be something that would be planned out. I, Tom's involved, and Tom would have to, you know, let us know when I, that would be taking place. I don't. I mean, we got more to do on the agenda, but if you have questions for Christy, keep them coming. But we, we do have more to do. All right, well, um, your letters will be in your cubbies. If you have any questions, um, feel free to, I have a new office, um, kind of was booted out of my old one. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so Jason's in my old office since he's in charge of the concierge. Um, I'm in the old conference room that we had and um, Yolanda and then Melissa should be back in two weeks, I think, from her maternity leave. And um, so we're, we're in our new place. So please stop in and see us. Tom did a great job with um, the new office. So, um, and again, yes, um, if anybody wants copy of the budget assumptions anytime after tomorrow for the board, um, hopefully approves the budget, then you can have that as well. Um, from my office, I can leave them. I can leave copies up there if that makes it easier at the concierge. So you could just, okay, yeah, that's fine. Copies so come Friday, come Friday, I can leave them up there if you want those. Okay, Christy, okay. thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Adele, could you reach behind you and turn the lights back on? Thank you, thank you. Adele, reach behind you with your right arm and please turn the lights back on. All of them, thank you. Sorry if I woke anybody up. So, um, you could turn that off. I turned this off. Okay, so now, now we won't have a, we shouldn't have a feedback. Okay, let's, let's just take a half a second break here. And we're about to introduce the um, 2022 Residence Council. But before we do, maybe I'd like to stretch a second. So I'd like to, by folks standing up, anybody who ever served on the council before, before this year, stand up, take a stretch, get the appreciation of your peers. I thought there'd be a lot of you in the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's introduce, let's have them introduce themselves, the incoming members for 2022. And over here. Joe, why don't you start and then pass the mic along as you go. If you wish. Don't make you come. Oh, I think that was it. <laughs> Well, I'm Joe Tim, and I've been criticized for not smiling enough. <laughs> well, I don't know, but that I spent uh, my second 30-year career in the classroom. <laughs> and I think that helps explain my seriousness. 
<laughs> um, thanks for electing me to the Residence Council. It's kind of a special honor for me because I've been here such a short period of time. I'm also a member of the Financial Review Committee and regularly attend SUSCOM meetings. I welcome any questions or comments that you might have regarding these or other topics. If I don't know the answer, I'll do my best to find it. Thanks again for the opportunity you have given me. Okay. Hi, I'm June Finer, and I thank you very much for electing me. Um, Woodland Pond is a good place, but it's not perfect. And I promise that I will listen to you. I'll listen to your requests and your suggestions and any useful information, and then we'll discuss it in the council and we'll take it to administration. Um, I'm particularly interested in trying to increase our dining options. It's one thing I think we will work on. Um, I would like to see the bathroom reopened to the fitness room. I would like to see a ping pong table area and possibly even pickleball, but thank you. <laughs> I'm Betsy Toole. Thank you very much for your votes and your support. And for the many, many words of congratulations I've heard, it's been very gratifying. I expect to show up. I expect to participate, ask questions, and to do the best I can as your representative on the council. Thank you. George, let me, let me have the other two introduce themselves and then we'll do questions. Yes, I'd like to have the other two new people introduce themselves and then we'll do questions. I'm Tamar Oppler. I thank you, as everyone else does, for electing me. I will listen to you. I will be your representative. And I just want to reiterate what I said at the uh, candidates meeting, that I'm very interested in having us form discussion groups regarding the pandemic, how we got through it, what it left us with, wherever these groups may go. I'm very interested in the dining issues. And I just want to put in a plug for what Yaakov has started, a kind of uh, message board right near the dining room. I think that can become a very useful tool for people who want lifts somewhere, who want to sell something, uh, also a, a kind of list serve both on paper and virtually. And I'd like to see that develop as well. I appreciate the uh, vote of uh, confidence uh, that I got from you. And as I said in my campaign speech, I'm committed to listening. And uh, going forward, I don't have a particular agenda, uh, except that uh, I would like to bring a sense of gratitude to everything I do. Gratitude for our, our place of residence here. Gratitude for the, uh, the, the workers here from top to bottom. And uh, gratitude for uh, the difference that you make in my life. So thanks very much. I have a question, George? Yes. Um, relative to dining, um, could there be more than one option for vegetarians and vegans? Because basically on the dining room uh, menu, menu, usually there's one option if you're a vegetarian or a vegan. And sometimes it's the same op option almost every night. So might that be considered? I'm sure it could be, and I'm, I'm going to guess it has been in the dining services committee, but I, I apparently it hasn't. It's not hasn't ripened to your complete satisfaction yet. Um, other questions? Okay, so now I'd like to also uh, have the remaining four members of this year's council speak about themselves for a second. We'll start over here with Mr. Yakov. 
a minute now. One minute. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, so I'll figure out what I do with the other 30 seconds. Um, well, thank you for the uh, confidence in electing me last year. I My focus when I was elected, say, to improve communications in all different levels, whether it's electronic and in person and so on and so forth. And I think we are, made, we are made some strides, but not enough. And I hope that we'll continue. I, you know, I don't hold it for anybody that elected me, so I'm still under punishment for another year and two months. Jaco, thank you. Alice? I didn't know I was having to talk to my, about myself, that I have other things I'm trying to say. Um, this is certainly a very productive, active, effective committee. And as you showed, a lot of you have been on it before, and I'm sure that some of the rest of you will want to be on it ultimately because it's um, having come from zero 11, 12 years ago, it's really a wonderful institution and uh, one of the inspiring things about the people at Woodland Pond and the management of Woodland Pond. Michelle? I try never to stand behind the podium for obvious reasons. Um, so let me just tell you what I've done the last year. And uh, I've been the um, corresponding secretary. So uh, we will actually, Annette and I, uh, post the agenda for the upcoming meeting. And the other thing I do is I check the mailboxes for any correspondence from any of you, of uh, things that you would like to bring up or for us to bring up at the residence council. The other thing that I do is I am also your liaison to the board. And the board basically just wants to know how we are most of the time when I go to that meeting. And I usually prepare a report for them. And it has a lot to do with what's going on in the residence council and what residents are talking about. And they always want to know that we're OK. So we are very lucky to have the board that we do have. So uh, that's just a little bit about what I do. And one of the other things that I got to do as the corresponding secretary, and you're going to hear more about this, is I put together all the annual reports that were submitted by the chairpersons of all the committees. And um, as Annette said in an email, it's amazing how much is being done every year in all these committees. So you're going to hear about that now. So thank you for having me continue to serve. Okay, then I won't. This is, I had no intention of talking to you about what we've done. So instead of talking about what I've done, I just want to say how much I've appreciated this year having Dave Smith as our president. He's <laughs> essentially the president each year has to figure out what are the tasks facing us this year. And Dave has steered the council in the direction of looking at the needs of you people who are isolated by COVID and finding many, many ways to bring us together on TV, in person, through telephone calls, through activities. Thank you, Dave. You're not, you're not staying on the council. That, you're leaving. Did you want him to get a goodbye speech? Okay, so, so I had I had asked these people um, to be prepared to speak for a minute or two about the committees to which they are liaison. However, I think the meeting's running a little bit long. So, with your permission, as Michelle said, the annual reports are all going to be available in the library. Um, they have all the detail, but I I, I do want to get to. Is that okay that we skip the individual reports? Good. Okay. So I do have two featured people who have been waiting to um, talk about their particular committees. I think you'll find them both interesting. First, we have Dawn Sangre from the Sustainability Committee, and she's going to be followed by Ray Smith from the EAF, which you heard questions relating to earlier. I'm not going to talk long. I know you've been here for a long time. So this is my prop. 
you all know about these containers, right? What I want to do in uh, less than three minutes is tell you how we got there, because it was not easy. And the Sustainability Committee, of which I am a proud founding member, um, did a lot of work with plastics and Ronnie in the beginning. We, it was one of our biggest concerns going into the foundation of the, of the, of the committee. What can we do about the plastics in the dining room? We had a lot of conversations with Ronnie about it, and, and it was a great education process on both sides as we came to realize what she was up against and she heard us that we really wanted we really wanted the dining room plastic situation to be more sustainable so eventually when we were all cooped up they settled on these three-part containers and originally i think it was yakov who said those things can be reused and so we invited the residents to clean them in their dishwashers and hand them in to somebody from the sustainability committee. And we found some people in the community who were interested in using them again. That was step one. And when that was in place, oh, and there was a memorandum of, a memorandum of understanding that we signed with those, those partners that we had in the community because Michelle wanted to be sure that, that they knew exactly what they were getting. And there's a law in New York State called the Good Samaritan Law, which absolves us from any liability if there was trouble. Um, there, was, there hasn't been any trouble, but uh, we wanted to be sure that they knew exactly what the terms of the agreement were. So that was the, the first stage. And then we went back to Ronnie and said, can we do this in-house? And she took the containers and ran them through the sanitation equipment in the kitchen 10 times and came back to us and said, yes, we can. So this is a great triumph. Instead of these containers going in the ocean or going in the landfill, they get reused. And all you have to do, and please don't stop doing it, is put them in your dishwasher and turn them in in the dining room by the hostess desk, and then they'll get used again. Save the earth. Thanks. I'm sorry. Top and bottom. Yes. I was just going to give it to I'm going to give it to Ray also. You want to step up, Ray? Did anybody have any a question for or a comment for Dawn? Okay. I know they've been doing a lot of publicity on this, so there shouldn't be a lot of unanswered questions. Come on up, Ray. You, you know, there's already some interest in your fund because you heard the, the question earlier, right? So. As the treasurer of the Employee Appreciation Fund and the funds representative to you to here today, I'm usually here asking you for donations. But this time, in spite of my money green sweater, I'm not really asking for donations. I'm basically here to thank all of you for the substantial gifts you've made to the Employee Appreciation Fund this pandemic year. We've surpassed all previous uh, years, and we'll have in excess of $230,000 to distribute to employees at the end of November. This goes to our hourly paid employees based only on the number of hours worked. It has nothing to do with seniority or position or anything like that. And that compares with the $165,000 that we distributed last year. So it's a huge increase. Uh, and it represents a 95% participation rate in independent living and a 58% participation rate in uh, the health center, which has never been anywhere near that. Uh, 
this is a significant amount of money to the employees who get it. If you work here at a minimum wage and you work full time, you're only your gross pay is about thirty thousand dollars, which does not go very far, and certainly doesn't go very far if you are a single parent. But with the EF money, the Employee Appreciation Fund money, we're able to distribute some fairly substantial checks. Last year, there were 94 employees who got checks larger than $1,000, which is a huge bump, especially at the end of the year. Um, and it goes basically to staff members who do most of the hands-on care of us here, the concierge, the maintenance people. Uh, and of course, in the health center, it's, it's absolutely crucial. We had, I got a note from one uh, daughter of a resident in the health center who wrote, we know without a doubt that my mother has come through these last difficult years due to the caring, loving staff who attend her on a daily basis. This includes both her physical and also importantly, her mental well being, as these daily interactions have kept her both engaged and alert. We've received donations even from residents who've just moved in within the last few weeks. Uh, very, very few residents, especially in independent living, have not donated. So we hope those who have not donated will make at least a token donation to increase the percentage of donations. I'd like to get it as close to 100% as we can. So thank you for all you've done to help us this year. Ray, what's the, Ray, yeah. what's the percentage of participation in independent living? It's 95%. Yes. When the employee gets this money, are taxes taken out so that it's less money? No, the employee gets the gross amount. The, these funds are actually taxable, but it's up to the employee to pay the tax. Uh, it's not, it's not it, the IRS considers it basically a tip, which is why it is not tax deductible to the employee. Uh, Ray, uh, this is a question for clarification. There's a lot of sort of talk and not knowing. What are the criteria for, for staff to get part of this money? In other words, do you have to have worked here a certain length of time? Do you have to be working here at the time it's distributed? All of this uh, is very unclear. You, you become eligible after you've been here for 30 days as an employee. So if you are an employee in good standing and you're still on the payroll or you, get, you are eligible to get part of this. Now this year, it's complicated because we have a few uh, employees who are hoping to get a medical exemption or a religious exemption. And those folks are essentially kept on, they're considered to be on a leave of absence until there's a decision on their request. So they're still el eligible. Yeah, the key is, you have to be, quote, an employee at the time we make the calculation to distribute, which is basically the middle of November. Is that it? Great job with the committee, great job with everything. 
Um, so I, I, I promise you um, this next session will be pretty brief. I wanted just to tell you, uh, Carl noted a couple things earlier, but what your residence council has been engaged in during the course of the year. Quickly, we had a telephone outreach program that started in last year and went over to this year. That's when we were all locked down. We, after, after we all got vaccinated, we solicited letters of support um, to our uh, elected officials, state officials, to support relaxed uh, regulations for health center visitors. We, and thank you, Paul and Dawn for this, we uh, participated in getting signatures for the thank you board, which now resides in the health center. That was a campus-wide activity. We all went around knocking on doors and actually had a good time doing it. I partnered up with Carl and we had some fun with that. Um, we, with management, developed a new pet policy. We um, wrote, and Shalom is the primary author of this, thank you. Shalom uh, filled in for the council for a few months when Michelle was on leave. Uh, we wrote a thank you letter to the staff, but also had a pro-vaccination uh, push in that. And later, a similar letter was issued by the board. So I think they used our format and made it their own idea too. Uh, we helped, tried to help raise committee by doing a letter to the health center residents. He had said, he and Betsy had come in and told the committee that um, participation was low in the health center. So we tried to identify who had proxies making their financial payments for them and contact them. And, and uh, increase their contributions. We participated in the thank you, Michelle, uh, uh, flash mob thing the other day, uh, but that wasn't, that didn't start out as our idea. It actually, Mary Alice came to me a couple of months ago and said we should do something and the idea kind of died, but it got revived by Ronnie and, uh, and Gretchen and it turned out, oh, I think we all had a good time with it. So I don't have to tell you that. Um, we also do, in terms of communications, we prepare a monthly uh, article for the Woodland Pond Life called Council Corner, and we do a twice a month TV program called Council Connection. So we try to keep not just our activities, but all the community's activities in the forefront, with different committees, different uh, staff members, different managers. I, I don't know whether this will continue next year or not, but it was an initiative that started last year and continued on to this year. So that's what we've been doing for you. Um, I'll now, if you want, uh, take some questions for myself or any of the other parties up here. But remember, your dinner is not going to be, you're not going to be charged $7 for a late pickup because Ronnie said she'd keep your meals in the, in the pub for you. And uh, George wanted to make a goodbye speech. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Anything well, else? <laughs> since you're giving me the floor, I would want to add one thing, Ray, and that is the interaction with the senior management uh, especially, especially our CEO, because I think that's been a very close and very productive uh, interaction that uh, really, really impressed me in my years on the board. Don. Just congratulations and thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Somebody making a quick exit. You can all you can all follow. I think we're done here. Thank you very much for coming. Um, appreciate your attention. Thank you. <laughs>